Good morning. It's good to be with you again. It's Monday morning, May 15th, and I'm so pleased to be speaking to you today. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Niantic Christian Churches. I'm the founder of <clears throat> Light Life and Love Ministries, an outreach effort from both churches, and I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. It's a podcast that shares stories of people that have overcome difficult situations and experiences to inspire others as they do the same. Today, I wanna to talk about empathy. Empathy specifically, and how it is different from sympathy, and why we need more of it in our lives, and how we can get more of it in our lives. So, <clears throat> let's just jump right in with that. I've got a little fog, frog in my throat this morning, so I do apologize for that. I know it can be distracting. But what is empathy, and how is it different from sympathy? Both empathy and sympathy inspire compassion in us, so both are very good. We need both of those emotions and actions. They help us to build up relationships and community and whatnot. Both are very good. <clears throat> They're often used interchangeably, but there's some nuances that really are important and differentiate the two. So let's start with sympathy. If someone is experiencing a difficult emotion, sympathy is when we can call up what that emotion feels like in ourselves and we can have compassion for them. So if someone is feeling grief, we know what grief feels like because we have felt grief and we have compassion for them. Empathy is what is their grief meaning to them. And it's a subtle difference, but it has some big applica uh, uh, ramifications. So empathy requires some patience, some understanding, sitting with them, asking them questions as appropriate. I mean, you don't wanna bombard somebody with questions when they're in the middle of feeling something intense. But as the time is appropriate, and as you spend time with that person, uh, set aside your own feelings of what that emotion feels like. So again, if we're going back to grief, we know what our grief feels like. We don't know what their grief feels like to them. So we might ask questions to understand a little better what their experience is. Empathy is understanding their emotion in their context and what it is doing with them. So for instance, uh, maybe they have never experienced this emotion before. Maybe this is the first time that they have had a loss so big that it's caused them grief. It can be overwhelming. We know what grief feels like because we have sympathy for them. So to empathize with them, what does this mean? You know, perhaps for us, grief will bowl us over, knock us out, and leave us without any capacity for a bit. <clears throat> that might not be another person's experience of grief. Empathy is understanding what it means to them. Maybe their faith is different. Their understanding of life and death is different. Their context is different. You know, being brought up in a different culture even if we're in the same country, in the same state, in the same community, we might have a different family context that interprets these things differently and experiences similar emotions differently. So it's not about what we think about an emotion, but what another person thinks about it. Uh, let's try another difficult one. Um, frustration is a good one. A uh, failure is a good one, guilt or shame, any of those things. When another person is feeling that, what does it mean for them? If we feel uh, a sense of failure, nobody likes that, right? We don't like it. Uh, when we feel it in our own lives, we know what that feels like, and it's icky and yucky, and we don't like it. We do want to learn from it. Uh, but that's our experience of it. We can sympathize with them because we know the ickiness when we've felt it. To empathize with them is to understand what it means in their context. So say someone has failed at getting a certain grade. 
To us, okay, we know what our experience is. To them, there could be a lot of different things feeding into this. For instance, if they're a younger sibling and it's a grade that they didn't get, uh, what it's like trying to live up to an older sibling, uh, the pressures that the parents are putting on them or not putting on them, all of those things are going to impact that person's experience of a failing grade. And it can be completely different from our own. So empathy, again, is understanding their experience of that emotion and what it means to them in their lives. Sympathy is knowing that how the emotion affects us. So therefore, we can extrapolate and be compassionate for them. However, how it feels for us may have little relationship to how it feels for them. So sympathy is good. It allows us to uh, use some grace and mercy and compassion, but empathy is a little better because it goes a little deeper and it considers that entire other person. We can be present to them in a more profound way when we understand what their experience is. So let's dig into this a little bit and um, you know, how we can develop those skills of empathy. So first we can listen actively. When someone is telling us about their experience, don't listen with the intent of relating your own. Just shut out your own experience and listen to theirs. Listen carefully to what they are saying. Don't interrupt. Try to understand their perspective and ask questions to clarify misunderstandings, not questions that will posit your own thoughts or beliefs, but questions to more deeply understand their own experience. Uh, practice perspective taking. And try to put yourself in this person's shoes and imagine how it would be for them. Consider their background, their experiences, their cultural differences, anything that may shape that perspective. <clears throat> Third, pay attention to nonverbal cues. And this is a big one. Observe the person's body language, their facial expressions, and tone of voice. These cues can give you insights into their emotional state. Do the words they speak match their body language? That's a big, a big one. Uh, it, and it can indicate a lot of different things. Perhaps that that person is experiencing some dissonance within themselves. Uh, maybe there's more that they're not wanting to speak at this time. And that's up to them what they want to choose. People get to choose what they want to share, when they want to share it, and with whom they share it. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, next is avoid judgment. And I don't mean just good or bad, but uh, building assumptions might be a better way to put this. Refrain from making assumptions or judgments about what another person is telling you. We may assume <clears throat> certain things from our own experience that is not present in theirs. Just listen for their experience, their thoughts, their feelings, and their behaviors, and go from there. Uh, just make it a space where they can speak freely and safely without your condemnation without you jumping to conclusions or without you interpreting from your own experience just listen uh, ask deeper questions of them to understand better if the time is right and it's appropriate and then express that empathy let the other person know that you understand that their feelings are really powerful for them at the moment. Um, you know, statements like, I can see you're really frustrated, or it sounds like you're going through a really rough time. Uh, I see that you are really struggling with this right now. Statements of that measure. I would avoid statements that would say, I know what you're feeling, because you don't. You know what you would feel in that circumstance. You don't know what they're feeling in that circumstance. Uh, practice self-reflection. Take time to reflect on your own feelings and experiences, and this can help you to be more aware of what you're bringing to the situation. So for instance, if I have, 
I lost my dad in 2011. So if I'm speaking to someone who has uh, lost their father or experiencing that freshly, I have to do a little bit of some self-reflection just to ensure that I'm not bringing my own experience into the moment, that I'm not bringing my own baggage, my own what have you, my own context, my own understanding of that into this experience with them. What I experienced when my father died was my experience. What they're experiencing in this moment is theirs, and I serve them so much more better if I am present to what they are experiencing, not assuming their experience based on my own. And then finally, be patient. It takes time to develop empathy. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with others and keep working at this to improve your empathy skills. Empathy, it's a, a cornerstone of human connection. The better we are able to empathize uh, and genuinely understand others, the better we can build those connections, the stronger relationships we can build. Um, distinguished from sympathy, empathy empowers us to bridge gaps, uh, to promote a deeper sense of compassion, cultivate spiritual growth, all of these wonderful things. So I encourage you to spend some time distinguishing among your own thoughts and experiences and feelings, the difference between sympathy and empathy. And when you encounter someone that's feeling something intensely, first within yourself, acknowledge your experience of it. Acknowledge the, the sympathy that you feel. I find it helpful to do that. Wow, in this situation, I feel this. Okay, I need to be aware of that, and I'm going to set that aside and be present to what their experience of it is. I'm not going to assume any of my context and my experience of it. I want to, when the time is right and it's appropriate, ask them questions to better understand their experience of that emotion. So that's empathy. I hope this was helpful. It can be a little confusing. The nuance is a tiny nuance, but an important one. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. And if you want to work on building these skills or anything else, just let me know. Reach out. I'm happy to help you with that. Uh, again, my name's Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of two amazing churches here in central Illinois in Iliopolis and Niantic. And I offer some online courses and resources for anyone who wants to work on their own faith and their own emotional growth. So that's what I have today. I will see you here again next Monday as I do every Monday at 9 a.m. And I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.